I, I feel coming away from this, someone might be thinking, oh, Christ, I'm, I'm more nervous for Leinster. And I have got that vibe off some of their supporters and even maybe off themselves a little bit. I'll give you the challenge now of making the case, even if you don't fully believe this, why Leinster are going to win. Yeah, I think we've got to reference the improvements from a, from a more perspective, the the evolution and that the set piece has become a weapon. Even from a lineup perspective, I thought they showed vulnerability last year. Their, their win percentage was dropping into the kind of mid 80s and some of the higher profile games where I think now their set piece, particularly lineup, is in, in a really good place. I think Andrew Goodman has, has brought some more variation and variety to their, their structured launches. Again, Labrachelle will take the learnings from Munster in terms of don't afford Leinster too many opportunities to strike from, from a line out perspective. But I think when Leinster do have that opportunity, I think they have the ability to like definitely La Rochelle first phase have areas in their defensive system that, that can be exploited that I'm a hundred percent sure Leinster will have spotted like some little space. I think 11 patterns potentially bouncing back to short side, potentially playing back under the rook. Um, there's a strong fold philosophy for La Rochelle. They want to get line speed second phase. So Leinster will have scouted exceptionally well. I think if they get that momentum in their game from their, their structured sequences, and if you look at the stats last year, they operate a 65% quick rook speed compared to La Rochelle's 47. So they were the big threat we've talked about, which we haven't spoken about, is La Rochelle's breakdown capacity and their ability to jack on slow down ball. But but they, I think Larish had three breakdown steals in the final, but outside of that, Lance were able to generate that rook speed. It'll be such an area of focus for them that if, if they can generate the rook speeds and be, and be really accurate in terms of their structured sequences, that 100% have the capacity. I think home advantage is another massive key for Lancer. And I know Birch talked about it on Monday in terms of, um, was it Birch or maybe even it was Eddie O'Sullivan on, on with you on the RT um, show talking about French teams, little bit of weakness in their mentality when they're away from home. I'm not so sure it's going to be applicable, but I think if if Leinster do get off to a good start and impose themselves like we've we've seen so often this season that and they get the confidence and the crowd behind them, I think the crowd will play a massive part that they absolutely have the capacity to beat them. I just think they're going to have to bring their bring their absolute A game for 80 minutes and the bench will play a crucial role. And the, the other hand, that mentality side is that they're a little bit different, this team, and the guys they've got in from abroad, someone in France actually made the point to me that Skelton, yeah, he's a big beast and he's unreal carrying and everything else, but his winner's mentality is just as important. He came in with a winning record. He expects to to win. And interestingly, Lancer have led at halftime in both these games and they've lost him and it's such a reversal of what we see in Leinster games and across yeah. every game. If you get up at half time, you're in a really good spot to push on. But La Rochelle have great mental fortitude, which again shouldn't be a major surprise. Um and I've gone back into state in their case. One of the other things around Lens- Leinster has been the honesty of a couple of their players this week. I thought it was great. Keenan said I don't think I performed in last year's final and he's right. Watching it back and thinking that is not the Hugo Keenan that I've been watching for the last year since that, who's been error free. Uh, Jamison Gibson Park, some really poor passing in the final. Caelan Doris actually said the same about his own performance. He said big players have the the biggest games on big occasions, and he felt he he didn't do that. So there's that internal drive in a lot of them, I think, as well as the fact that some of them still haven't won a trophy with Leinster, which is crazy. A Danchi and not having lifted a trophy in a Leinster jersey is remarkable, and Keenan in the, the same bracket. So all those lessons they learned from last year and have, I would say, improved in in their games, both with Ireland and with Leinster, a lot of since has, I suppose, given Leo Cullen belief that they can go and do it, and Stuart Lancaster as well, as he tries to sign out um, with, a, with a big win. But it's going to be a phenomenal game. Cannot wait to see how it pans out. There's another match in Dublin on Friday night, Owen, which is going under the radar, of course. It's a Challenge Cup final, which generally doesn't really excite the, the wider public unless your team is involved. But... Glasgow v Toulon could actually be a cracking contest to to decide the outcome of this one. Yeah, hundred percent. Like a lot of people expected Glasgow to to go deep in in the in the URC, didn't they? And potentially one eye on on silverware in terms of the the European Cup. So 
I think both teams play an exciting brand of rugby, don't they? I think Nigel Carroll, in, in terms of Irish interest, obviously Nigel from a from a Glasgow perspective, I, I think some of their attacking rugby has been exceptionally good. The Scottish internationals to the forefront there. I think Sioni has been pretty pivotal, pivotal from that regard, um, playing a lovely brand of rugby. And um, I think these Challenge Cup finals are generally entertaining affairs, aren't they? High scoring. Toulon will bring a lot of pizzazz as well. Sergio Parise, you mentioned, is, is still flying the flag there. Um, so, yeah, fascinating matchup. Um, James Cochran from a Toulon perspective coaching there. So lots of Irish interest. And, um, yeah, tight one to call, I have to say. I think it would be good, obviously, from a, a URC perspective, if Glasgow were able to come up with the win and, and give um, Leinster a bit of heart in terms of the the URC top 14 matchup um, to get off to a winning start. Should be fun. There's another Irish connection with Killian Reardon. Someone flagged me this morning as the head of athletic performance in Glasgow. And you can kind of see his, the impact of his work with the speed of their ball and the speed they play at. So I think it's always brilliant to see those Irish practitioners and coaches going abroad and making an impact because it happens so, so regularly. Owen. And I suppose for someone like, James Cullen, he's on the record. Last time I spoke to him, he said, I'd love to get back to Ireland if the right role is there. How tricky is it going to be for a coach like him to, to get that right role, given the paucity of them here? Yeah, it's difficult, isn't it? Timing's everything in sports. Like, you look at Mull, what did he do? He did five years in, in the UK, did he, with Bristol before coming back to Connacht. Um it's just biding time and waiting for the right opportunity. I think he's building up a, a bank of experience. If you if you look at the guys in France himself, Dunica Ryan, O'Gara, you're thinking they're probably three names that will ultimately end back up in Ireland at some point. Um, and it's probably having foresight both provincially and from an RFU perspective to have identified those coaches as coaches of interest, opening up dialogue with them and, and kind of mapping out a route back to back to Ireland because I think we're both pretty strong in this, aren't we? That would would like to see Irish Indigenous coaches get the opportunity, particularly in those head coaching roles. And I think that's an area where where Irish rugby has to improve. And, and guys like Coughlin are, are, have kind of done the hard yards. And and when you think of the the amount of coaching experience you're building up in France, just give, given the the volume of games and, and seeing a different way different styles, uh, different mentalities. I've been able to bring back to bring that back to the Irish system, I think is an incredibly attractive proposition. So yeah, as I said, sport is all about timing and, and I think he, James has got to bide it, but if he's adding trophies to his, his CV, he starts to become a pretty attractive proposition. I don't feel too sorry for him either. He lives, I think, a couple of hundred metres across the road from the beach and <laughs> he's in to on and it's not the worst place in the world as they try to rebuild to former glories. He was in Exxon Provence, I think, before that, and I, I honeymooned on, near Exxon Provence, and yeah. that's not a bad spot either. So he's picking and choosing his clubs in, in France <laughs> very, very well. I think there's something in that because he wasn't in brief for too long, <laughs> which is kind of landlocked in there. So um, yeah, good luck to him and good luck to Nigel Carolyn. And yeah, it should be a, a fun game. Before we go, I have to ask you about something we didn't touch on on Monday is the video of the Stormers when they found out that they weren't going to have to travel to play Leinster in Dublin and Joseph D. Dweeb had a comment about what they're going to do to Munster. What did you make of this video? What do you think Munster will have made of it all? Oh. I think the elation <laughs> is definitely not you're playing Munster in the final. I think it's more a fact mm, you've got a home yeah. final, isn't it? Like I, I can see the optics around it. I would say deep down, they'd probably definitely prefer to have played Munster at home than, than Leinster in the Aviva. I think that's yeah. natural, isn't it? Their chances of winning have probably gone up significantly. Um, yeah, I know I saw Dave Vessels straight away on, in the background, so I took a quick screen grab and, and sent him a <laughs> screenshot, uh, giving him a bit of stick. But um, yeah, I think much made about nothing really. Those videos generally don't tend to surface today, but uh, I would say more indicative of, of the fact that they don't have to get on a plane and, and travel up to, to Dublin when they've got uh, what is a, a big occasion, isn't it? When you think a home URC final is a massive, massive occasion for them and um, one they'll be hugely excited about. But uh, it's a 
it's a fascinating matchup, isn't it, with Munster? I, I know we'll talk about that next week, but uh, a huge opportunity. It would probably be a Royal Rover stuff, wouldn't it? If they go, was it six or seven games on the bounce away from home and, and come away with a trophy, would be some achievement. And the Stormers guys would look a little bit silly. Maybe maybe Munster will uh, return, sir, with a celebratory video in the DHL box. <laughs> Well, what do you do now? Because you can't pin it to the dressing room wall. What does Peter Omani do with this? Put it on the top of the WhatsApp group, or I don't know. There must be somewhere you can store it up and watch it every night. <laughs> yeah, on their on their huddle platform, or their their uh, there analysis. It'll be, it'll be on loop. They'll do some annotations and highlight key players that uh, we're talking shit about them. So plenty of plenty of ammunition there. No doubt, George Murray is already on the case. No doubt at all. It's going to be two great weekends ahead, but um. This Saturday is the big one. Call it on to, to finish. Please. Uh, I'm going to call La Rochelle victory. Oof. Just. Yeah. I think there's a lot of people in that camp, but I think everyone's saying just, and they'll go right down to the wire. We are going to be back on Friday to discuss it more. Myself and Kieran Kennedy are going to be in the Aviva Stadium, chatting to the coaches, getting the last bit of the captain's runs. Hopefully catch a few other people who are there and, and get a sense of the atmosphere on the eve of what's going to be a, a great game. Owen, thanks for now. Cheers, Murray. Enjoy the weekend. I will do. Thanks to everyone for tuning in. We'll catch you on Friday.